when we came back from the national championship game, and we did have a trophy with us. It wasn't the one we expected or wanted. But the beauty was, was not having the trophy come with us. It wasn't the number one ranking through the year. It wasn't all the accolades that came with it. The benefit was the changes that happened, the growth of who we became. Because that trophy is going to rust in 15, 20 years. And in 15, 20 years, somebody might not even remember who was in the finals. But who we became is forever. And we get to build on that. We get to grow from that. And we get to become more from that. And that's why we set the destination. That's why we set the goal. And that's why we have that every single year as a priority for what we do. Because it's the inspiration for us to change and grow and become somebody different. Secondly, it was very important for us to identify gifts. In the recruiting process, that's so critical, to be able to identify the gifts in people. Because to have a, a good team, everybody must have a different gift, and you bring it together to make a good team. If we all have the same gift, we are lacking either on the defending side or the attacking side. We need to have a good balance of what we have and the gifts we have. I was very fortunate growing up as a a 5'6 athlete that wasn't very fast. I had parents that didn't focus on the fact that I wasn't a great athlete, but the gifts I had, what they did was they promoted that in me. They fused that in me, and they said, let's not look on the fact that you're a small white kid, but let's look at what the positives are in your life that will allow you to still be successful. And to this day, my dad told me a story recently about, about that, about the gifts we have and how they're all different. And he, he likes playing golf. But he's about 80 years old, and his eyesight is not so good right now. So he's at the club one day, and when he goes to play golf now, because his eyesight isn't, he has buddies that go with him. Because the buddies are important for him to play golf, so when he hits the ball, he can find it. Well, he shows up one day at the club, and his buddies don't show up. And it's a beautiful day, crisp, clear day. And he knew this was a day he wanted to play golf. But he's sitting there in the club, and he has nobody helping where he finds somebody he knew that day that walked up to him about his age that said, what's the matter? He says, well, I, I so much wanted to play today, but my buddies aren't here. And you see, he said, my eyesight isn't great. I need somebody that can see the ball when I hit it. He says, well, I have great eyesight. I can help you. He says, really? He says, yeah, I've, for my age, I have like 20, 20 eyesight. He says, I can help you. He said, great. So they can jump in the cart and they pull up to the first hole. My dad and he, you know, dresses the ball, he hits it right down the fairway. He said, did you see it? He says, yes. He says, do you know what, you did, did, did you catch it? Did, he says, I saw it all the way. He says, where is it? And he looked at him and he says, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are no different. 
What they want to do is they want to be recognized for the gifts they have, for what they're doing right. And for us, in our words especially, it's so critical that we do that, and it's one of the essential things that we do with our program. Lastly, it was so important that we create a culture for our program, a culture for us to grow and develop and, and nurture their, their uh, ability to become everything they can become. And there were a lot of things that went into that, a lot of rules and regulations even to create that culture, because when we first got there, it was not a culture of success. In fact, one of the things we talked about was time. How do we handle time? What I understand is time is the great democracy of life because we all have 24 hours. That it doesn't matter whether you're the president of the United States or somebody out on the street here begging for a dime. We all have 24 hours. It really is how do we use it that dictates our success. So we're very, we're very uh, critical of that, that, that we must use our time well. And in fact, the game of soccer is 90 minutes long. So how do we use that 90 minutes? And what we said was, for our culture, it was important that we respect each other's time. If you didn't show up to training on time, you don't earn the right to train that day, because that's a privilege. That started right from the beginning. And what we knew, we found out the culture was changing when in my second season here, we were training cold winter day up at Traeger Center, about a half a mile from where we actually changed where our locker room is. Beautiful indoor facility, one of the great facilities we have. And it was indoor that day because of this nasty weather and very cold. Well, we trained in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning was when training was started. In the locker room at about 20 minutes to 8 o'clock, our two freshmen, recognize the guy next to him, the guy that has the locker next to him, isn't there. Thank goodness for cell phones. They pick up the cell phone, they say, OT, where are you? Sure enough, he had overslept. Whatever, the alarm didn't go off, he didn't set it, he wasn't there. So they said, OK, we're going to solve this. Great. We're going to grab your stuff, we'll meet you halfway on the way, you can change on the way up to Traeger, and you'll be there on time. So they gather all this stuff, they get it together, and they make a beeline. OT gets out of bed, doesn't even hardly change, and he's, he's off, and they meet him. Halfway there, they have enough time to make it to train. They give OT his stuff, he's all getting ready to change. The two guys realize they forgot their own boots for training. They don't have their shoes. So now OT starts taking off and getting the trainer. These guys got to run all the way back to the locker room and still get up to Traeger. Well, I'm up at Traeger, and we're getting ready to, to start for training, and I have a pretty good idea at this time what's going on. So I'm looking at the clock, I'm setting up for training, and sure enough, right before 8, OT comes in the door. And he's huffing and puffing, and he's running the whole way, he just makes it just a knock. 8 o'clock comes, we start training. We start with the warm-up, get him moving a little bit, and OT's shoulders are slumped, his head is down, and he's looking at the clock, looking at the door. Sure enough, a couple minutes after eight, those two guys come running in. So they come running over to me, and I say, look, I know what's going on. I understand. You are late. Your responsibility now is to facilitate training. You help us put combs down, pick up vests, whatever it is, but you missed training today. Now OT's shoulders are really slumped. He knows what's going on. Those guys put their boots over there. He knows they're not training. So we get through the warming part of it, and we're getting ready to go on to the next part. Some functional training. We're moving around and setting it up, and OT starts coming walking toward me. And I'm avoiding. I'm walking away. I know what's going on. So I turn away. He says, Coach, Coach. And I'm trying to, like I didn't hear it. Find it close enough, I can't avoid him. He says, Coach, it's not fair. I said, OT, what are you talking about? He said, it's not fair that I'm training today. And those guys aren't. It's because of me that those guys are late. And I said, you're right. I said, those guys have given you a gift, though, OT. Their responsibility of being here on time, they were late. Those are the rules. But now they've given you a gift. And what you're doing right now is wasting that gift. You're wasting that opportunity. You have a responsibility today to be everything you can become and honor the gift that they've given you. 